Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So today we're setting up the HTTPD web server on OpenBSD. So this web server here is built into the base. So right when you install OpenBSD, you don't have to install it or anything. So all we're going to do is log in as root and check uh, three things before we start. You want to make sure you set a static IP, and I've done that. And under Etsy, my gate, make sure you set the default router for your network. And make sure you set DNS servers, okay? Now we can test all this quick with a ping, and we are all good. So you do want that before you get started. Now, to set up a plain text uh, web server with HTTPD, all we actually have to do is vi etsy httpd.conf and we're going to actually use macros and if you're familiar uh, with pf macros are the same thing they're just a variable here so we're going to use external ip and this ip here is going to be the public ip of the server in this case you know it's 192.168.0.1 just put yours in there Below that, you want to put a server clause here. Now, we're going to put server, and in quotes, I'm going to start with default. Um, this is very important, though. If you use this in production, put the domain name here, all right? So if you have, like, example.com, put that there. Because depending on the request in the HTTP GET request, it you can have different server fields for each domain and do like virtual hosting and things as well. But this is fine for a lab. <clears throat> now you do want a, a curly brace here because in this block, um, this will tell it what this server should do. We're gonna say listen on, and then we're gonna say dollar sign, external IP, and this means it's listening uh, on that IP address. So after that, say port 80. It's listening on port 80, TCP by default. Now, under this, we're going to say root. And this means where it's going to serve files. So where it's going to access the files that make up a website. Now, we're going to say slash test. And then wrap that in, in your quotes. Now, in this uh, line there, there's something uh, important to understand about the root uh, directive. What this means is, this means from inside of the change root that HTTPD runs inside of. Um, basically, it starts up and it, it does privilege separation. So when the, a web connection comes in, it runs as an unprivileged user. So if it's compromised and an attacker runs malicious code in its you know stack in its code space, you won't get um, that those instructions running as root. In addition to that, to the privilege separation, it also runs in a change root. So if they were able to somehow list the files once they broke into the processes, the process. Um, you're only going to see the files in the change root, and you won't be able to install like a root kit on the rest of the file system and things like that. But that also means your slash doesn't mean the slash of your OpenBSD install. So like, you know, slash home, this means something different. And we're going to go into that once we create the files here. With that, though, that's the basic for a plain text. Um, we're going to go ahead and make the files next. So we're going to go into var www, which is the default change root directory. And let's make that directory test. And we're going to go into here. Um, and then we're going to do it with a basic HTML file. And again, you can have many more um, things in, in your website, obviously. But we're just going to say this is a website. 
hosted on OpenBSD by HTTPD, okay? And we'll end that tag and end our other tags here. All right, we should be all good. So if we do print working directory, we have var ww test and what I want you to imagine is that the website the web server goes from slash test and then inside of here it serves index HTML. Okay. So with that we're gonna do rcctl enable httpd and rcctl start httpd and now we're gonna say net stat an and we're gonna look for IPv4. Whoops, I'm sorry, not for that. We're gonna to pipe to the less. That was for something different. Now you can see it. It's listening on that IP, an external IP, and it's on port 80. So now we're gonna quick hop over to the web browser and we're gonna to go to that IP address and see that it's serving the website for us. I'll see you in a second. All right. So now we're gonna hop over to that website on HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.01. So there we go. This is our plain text. And it says, this is a website hosted on OpenBSD by HTTPD. Now, this is uh, serving it from that index.html. And if we change anything or add files, that will be, that will be reflected here. So now, we're going to add on to this, so let's hop back over to the server. All right, so what we're going to add on to this is SSL and or TLS encryption. So to do this, we're going to use public and private keys. And when we utilize those, that's called asymmetric encryption. So we're going to go to Etsy here, and we're going to make a directory um, httpd underscore SSL. Let's go into that directory. And we're into in Etsy HTTPD SSL. Now we're going to use Open SSL, and uh, do do realize that Libre SSL they did keep the name, so you are using it. So we're going to request dash x509, and this is going to be SHA-256, and that's for the hashing algorithm. And we're going to say new key RSA. 2048, that's the bit length. So that's how hard this key is to brute force, basically, and how much it can encrypt. So now, after this, we're going to say key out. And um, the key out here is going to be ttech.key. And this is the private key. This portion of the key pair is what is used to encrypt information that is being sent in this server's connection because each server has a unique TLS connection. Now the other key in this pair is the public key and that's ttech.crt. Now the public key is used by the client that's connecting to the server and the public key is the part that encrypts the information. So these, this pair here it's only valid for a certain time. And we say that with days, and then we're gonna say one year, 365. And lastly, we're also gonna disable DES because we don't want this older encryption standard involved with these keys. We're gonna hit enter, and we're gonna say US. And again, if you were uh, filling this out, do put actual, like here, put your actual domain name, etc., And you know, the admin's email address, etc. But for the lab, it's okay. Now we should have those two files. And I will explain here the CRT. Now this, what the client does is takes the plain text data, just like the, the get request, for instance, or the contents of the web page, or a form they might be sending back. And they take that and they take the string and use it to encrypt, use it as part of the encryption when they create when they create the encrypted data. When they're done with that, they have ciphertext, and they send that over the TCP connection to the server, and the server 
uses this key file and it takes the portion, the, the, the payload that's encrypted, the cipher text, and runs it, decrypts it with this string in addition. So it puts both of the strings together. And when it does that, it has the other part. It has both sides of the encryption. So then it decrypts whatever data the client encrypted with the specific public key. So the client does this as well, though, because they have the SSL hello messages that take place on a TLS connection. So we have our keys, though, and that's why we have two and what it means. So let's go back to Etsy and then go to, I'm sorry, go into that file, httpd.conf. So we want to add another server clause. We're going to add server SSL. And then we want to have our bracket. And then we're going to say listen on. And we're going to use, again, the external IP. We're going to say this time TLS. And that means this is SSL. We're using encryption. Port 443. And now we need another clause inside of it that tells it where the keys are to use for this TLS connection. The key is going to be the private key. So we're going to say Etsy httpd underscore SSL ttech dot key. And that can also be your domain name. That's a good way to keep them, keep track of them. And now we're going to say certificate. And this is the, the um, public key here. So TTEC CRT. And now we're going to end that block. And under there, we're going to say root again. And this means the same thing. So in that change root, where to get files from. And now we want to end that server block. So with that, and you do make sure your paths are, are good, because I will say, if you have an error, you probably have the wrong path in here. So we're going to save this. And we're going to restart the server. All right. Now let's do netstat an. And now you can see it's listening on 443 as well. So now what we're going to do, again, is go over to the web browser. But now we're going to connect to HTTPD with encryption. I'll see you there. All right, so now we're back where we had our um, the plain text website. We're going to go ahead now and type https colon slash slash 192.168.01. And now it says our connection is not private. Now I'm going to proceed under advanced and proceed to the website. So you see we have the same file because we were getting the files out of the same place. But the reason it says it's not secure doesn't have to do with the encryption, okay? It doesn't have to do with the, you know, AES it's using or the SHA-256 or anything. What the problem is, is that the public key that HTTPD, our web server, sent to our browser isn't signed by a certificate authority, okay? Mm -hmm. So the reason it's not signed there is because we created it ourselves, and it's called a self-signed certificate. Usually, you take the public key and you pay a certificate authority to sign it. So basically, they take a pen to paper, so to speak, put their signature on there, and that, that's a di digital signature. And lots of software, our email clients, our web uh, browsers, you know, what have you, um, they have this certificate signature in there and it verifies it. So then you wouldn't have a message. You, you know this website that you're connecting securely to is who you think it is because anybody can set encryption up. It doesn't mean it's a, you know, a good actor, etc. So let's go to certificate and you'll see here issued by test because that's what we used and you know test is not trusted the browser does not know what that is so then it's valid for a year as you can see if we go to details you'll be able to see the output 
of the command and what actually happens. See, it's RSA 2048 and all of that. And if we go to certification path, there's our problem. There is no chain of trust. All right. So that is uh, how we secure a web session to our HTTPD and set up SSL encryption. So with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, it's been Tyler with T-Tech. I can't thank you enough for watching. I do appreciate it and have a very nice day.